The new $2 billion LRT line has received mixed responses from Ottawans and has garnered a lot of attention from City Hall. But just a couple hundred yards down behind Bayview LRT station, there is a group of people who have resorted to living in a tent community after their rooming house burned down in April. David Vance was part of the group who set up their tents in the woods behind the LRT station. With no affordable housing and unwilling to relocate to one of Ottawa's overcrowded homeless shelters, Vance was left with no other choice. I don't know. I don't. Uh, now he's left to focus on the day-to-day really -day of surviving on the streets. I uh, keep pretty busy. You get the firewood. You gotta feed yourself. You gotta... With winter coming, some city councillors have paid the camp a visit. It is extremely unfortunate that the camp is there. Uh, I think that is a condemnation of our city, it is a condemnation of our society, that people are sleeping outdoors. Uh, but it is insofar as they have the equipment they need and, and help from the outside, it is, a, it is a safe place for those residents. In 2018, around 8,000 people stayed in an emergency shelter in Ottawa, a record high for the city and representing a 6.5% increase from 2017. Emily Hayes is the acting director for the Alliance to End Homelessness. She says the city should be doing more. Do we feel okay as a city to allow people to live in tents in the winter? Um, do we feel okay with having, you know, overflowing shelters? It's, it's hard to survive and get by when there's so many people wanting, you know, you, and you wait for your food. It's, it's like a line up for, for Disneyland trying to get, you know, just basic lunch, right? Neil Washburn lived on the streets for about five years and knows what it's like during Ottawa's long winters. My health was really deteriorating. I had to spend, after being homeless, uh, two months in the, two to three months in the Montford because my feet were all cut up and needed to be bandaged and uh, I needed to be on other medication because I hadn't slept well and uh, I was really unhealthy. I had to gain back my weight. It took me a couple of years and I gained back the, the 40 pounds. So I went from about 140 to 180 in a couple of years. In the white shirt, I was just arriving at the building. And then in the black shirt, I've, I've been there for four years. So that's a four years difference in uh, I'm much healthier in the, in, the, uh, old, in the newer picture than I am in the older one. Councillor McKenney says a big part of the problem is the lack of affordable housing. So we don't have nearly enough affordable housing, not just community housing, but affordable market rental uh, housing. We, uh, we have a, a, a deficit. This deficit has led to a vacancy rate of 1.6%, below the 3% which is the recommended target for cities. This is pushing up rent prices. There are a number of policy solutions the city is looking at. You know, we can do things like limit short-term rentals, we can put in place um, inclusionary zoning, we can, you know, do some capital builds, we can housing allowances, ensuring people don't fall into homelessness. While City Hall debates solutions, including budgeting $15 million to build affordable housing, frontline workers like Rick Ogilla are dealing with homelessness on the streets. It's pretty much everybody in terms of uh, uh, basic snacks to get through the night, having, having a, a sandwich made that they can eat. Everything's obviously openable, you don't have to cook or anything, so water, juice boxes. Ottawa Inner City Ministries is privately funded, with all items being donated. And everything's counted in inventories. The street team delivers privately donated supplies 365 days a year. We'll cover the cart, obviously for weather uses. And that's it, we're ready to go. But, Ojala admits, the street outreach team is a band-aid solution. And dealing with the lack of affordable housing is the key. The number of things that you would have to cut in order to find another $15 million or find $30 million, 
you are going to be meaningful to people's quality of life. We don't have a lot of luxury programs or nice to have programs. Um, you know, are you going to take that money from parks? Are you going to take that money from roads? There are always limited resources. There are always competing priorities. Um, but it is also about the resources are there if we, you know, generate more revenue and also depending on the choices that we want to make as a city. They do the best they can. Yes. Not as effective as you'd like to see, but, but it's, they do what they can. But for people like Vance, the city's best isn't good enough. Bailey Morden, The 25th Hour.